Welcome back to Remote Connect 2022. I'm Pedro Barros, the VP of Finance of Remote. For today's session on scaling your global finance operations, we have a special guest that has a very deep understanding on setting up and scaling finance operations globally. Anil, thank, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Anil joined Airbase as a CFO close to one year ago now, has over 15 years of experience in the financial industry, leading very successfully uh, early stage companies and uh, was also with one of the big four uh, early in his career. Airbase uh, is one of the most uh, comprehensive spend management platforms for small and mid-sized companies to manage to manage all their uh, non-payroll spend uh, globally. Um, I'll jump uh, into, into the conversation of what brought us here today. Um, Anil, what are your thoughts uh, now that you're focusing heavily on, on, on financial operations and scaling this um, between finance, the CEO and the board in terms of developing a strategy for financial operations uh, at the firm? Yeah, I think um, if you if you kind of go to the root of, of what are we all trying to do at an early stage of a business, right? Call it your Series A, B, C, uh, and beyond. Uh, at the early stage, we're all trying to understand how predictable is this business, especially on the revenue side, right? And so um, obviously, yes, you will spend some time setting up finance operations, um, like your air bases needed for AP and NetSuite needed for ERP, but the, a large amount of the effort the CEO and the sales leaders and the finance leaders will be spending with the board is understanding what's our forecast, right? What's our top line forecast for the next two, three, four quarters? And what's our vision for the next two, three years? And so the role is, you know, finance CEO board is to, to help align the, the, the plan, the long range plan to the vision of the company and ultimately the, the one year plan to execution. And, and so that's the high level as to what are you focused on? And there's a whole host of other areas that you go into detail on to, to, to triangulate a point as to why you think, you know, we can hit, hit a certain target. So increasingly, not only finance, but also the, the, the operational aspect, uh, the finance operations as, as per se, is having an increasingly bigger impact uh, in how you manage in the direction of companies. How you've been managing it and how you aim to bring the highest impact possible to the firm uh, by leading the finance in the, in the best way possible. Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest things uh, you focus on is, is how can we deliver value for the org? How can we help the rest of the company uh, be the best version of themselves on and bring the best version of themselves to work on a daily basis, right? So it's everything from the back end side of finance uh, to, to the internal consumer end of finance and supporting the team, um, but also to delivering insights to the business. Oftentimes financial organizations are the ones that are, that are trying to help drive the analytics integrations for the business, trying to help set up the business systems for the company. And then ultimately using those systems and analytics to drive insights that can help lead the business in the next few phase of growth uh, for the company. So how can we help build the top of the funnel model for the company? How can I help deliver value to the sales leaders and, and, and marketing leaders to help them understand the dollars they're spending? Are they being uh, on the face of it? And within the model, are they showcasing value hitting revenue? And, and where is the best location or place that we invest the next dollar uh, to, to get that next phase of growth. So I think that's what we play the role in is number one, foundational to the company being able to grow. Uh, number two, helping drive uh, insights and foundational analytics. Number three, building the relationships across all of the orgs such that folks feel like finance is here to help them uh, in partnership, right? Because we're all on the same shared journey and, and, and goal. You touched on, on, on two aspects which uh, are increasingly becoming uh, relevant. One of them being the technology that you use and you mentioned Airbase and NetSuite, which are our fundamental tools for you to, to be able to progress as a business. So automation uh, that you bring to, to the business and, to, and tech based solutions to, to scale your teams, but also the expertise on, on the other side and the individual. 
like how do you balance this and how do you optimize, especially as you go through the different phases of, of scaling, as you mentioned, from A to C? Uh, how, how, how do you balance this? Like when you bring one versus the other and when you yeah. start scaling things? Look, I think um, you'll see this a lot and, and you'll see this in, in many different parts of G&A, uh, right across legal, people, finance. Um, early days, it's important to be able to find that those generalists that can help touch many different areas, right? The person who's seen uh, the messiness, who, who's not afraid of the uncertainty of every day, and the person who can help be that Swiss army knife, right? Who can help figure out your foreign and A and then potentially work on the model the next day, oh wait, and then potentially work on a billings issue or an AP thing. And, and so, that's the early days. And obviously, as the company grows, you start to go more into uh, specialty areas, right? You have your own FP&A team, you start to have your own accounting team, and then maybe if you're a fintech and capital markets or you know credit team and whatnot, and, and a whole bunch of uh, uh, verticals. But the point ultimately is that you bring on people who've seen it before. And, and, and that's helpful because we're all in risky companies, right? We're all in startups. So startup by, by definition has a level of risk associated with the term startup. And, and so what, how do we then de-risk a startup? We bring in folks who've, who've seen some of this before, who've dealt with similar issues before in their past. And that I think is a way you can actually de-risk the execution of what is already a risky uh, business. And so um, number two, I think it's important that those folks uh, work really well with one another, right? And, and ultimately that they understand that we are all moving in the same direction. Um, and, and one of the things that I like to, to pride ourselves on internally here is that we have a GNA roadmap. We have a finance roadmap. What are we working on in Q1, Q2, Q3? What are the themes behind them? And is that really the best use of our time for the company to achieve its biggest goals? Right, and that's the way we ensure that we too in GNA line up uh, behind our company's biggest three, four, five strategic initiatives for the coming twelve months. And uh, those involve bringing systems. And uh, what does what is the the play, the role that is playing, like all the automation and the, the systems uh, side? Yeah, of the, to, to yeah well, I can I can tell you two, three companies in a row now. The role has always been: you come into the company and you're like, wait a minute, everyone has different definitions of a booking or ARR or or of an active customer or an active user or of an S zero or of an MQL or an SQL. And and so usually it starts off by asking a lot of questions. And, and trying to understand who is looking at what set of metrics, um, what metrics do we care about that actually can determine success for the company? And then, then you figure that list out and you actually define them. How do we want to define these metrics? And, and once you kind of have a set of metrics and those definitions, then you can kind of go about figuring out how do I orchestrate the automation of these things? And how do I then connect my sales force, my ERPs, my, you know, my, my product analytics and everything to a single data warehouse how do I then start to DBT and model on top of it? Um, and then, you know, once you have a level of modeling on top of it, how can I then push these analytics back out to the systems that folks use every day, like the sales forces of the world? Or do I put it into visualization tool like a Tableau or a Looker? Um, and so, you know, I think it starts off fundamentally with understanding what are the metrics we care about as a company that will determine our success or have a highest likelihood to determine our success. Hard to be clairvoyant in an early stage, but, um, and then figuring out how do we get those metrics in front of folks consistently so we can make uh, business decisions on them as fast as possible. We couldn't touch obviously scaling uh, global global operations without searching exactly on teams and, and how are you scaling your teams. Uh, you obviously have a distributed uh, workforce. How, how are you hiring the best folks and uh, what's the play that, uh, what, what the role has played like in terms of being able to hire anyone anywhere uh, yeah. into the performance of, of, of your finance organization and, and their base of role? Yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, I'll say that uh, I've been blessed and, and, and fortunate enough to work at a company uh, prior to, to Airbase as well as a company before that that did believe in the value and the benefit of remote work. Uh, my last company having been a remote first business as well and, 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 and having years of experience pre-COVID in the remote first arena, you know, where there was the companies like, you know, the GitLabs and folks who were pioneering the, you know, the, 
the, and, uh, the, that, that push forward and the acceptance of remote hiring. Now we are here, folks accept it, right? We've been forced into it over the last couple of years. And so I'd say that um, it's been crucial and critical for us. Um, if you look at uh, number one, just the amount of startups out there, number of companies growing that need financial resources on a weekly basis, it is definitely a talent crunch. And so your ability to hire uh, strong talent around the world is critical. Luckily, here at Airbase, we do have uh, the majority actually on an on account basis of our, of our employees in India. And, and as such, we've found excellent talent in India, on not just the technical side in R&D, but also on the financial side of folks who've worked at companies now on the public uh, technology side that have gone public. And, 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 and those folks bring us uh, a wealth of knowledge internally. And so I'd say it's critical to be able to hire internationally. It's critical to have a, uh, what we call location strategy, right? Not just also hiring onesies, twosies and, and, and 60 different countries without, you know, think of time zone coverage, skill set benefits, all of that. Uh, so for us, it's been, I would say, a superpower of us to be able to uh, hire internationally. Perfect. Look, Anil, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing in this short session um, how do you see financial operations impacting firms and uh, how do you go about the balance between teams uh, and systems? Thank you. Thank you for having me.